Heritage is all around us, but often goes unrecognised. The stories about what makes a place special and irreplaceable may be lost if they are not passed on between generations. If we don't learn how to understand and explain our heritage, how will we protect it? Is it possible to nurture an awareness of the importance of heritage in the younger generations by helping them to develop a visual and verbal understanding of the heritage places around them? How can new technology help create a deeper appreciation of our heritage? The National Trust of South Australia and Makers Empire formed a partnership to find out what would happen when primary school students engaged with heritage in their local area using 3D technologies. The Year 4 and 5 students with their teacher from Sturt Street Community School got to know some of the historical buildings near their school. Inspired by the architectural features and stories of these buildings, Students used Makers Empire's 3D design software to create their own models. The project ran for six weeks. We started by talking about how to observe the world around us, like history detectives. We looked at 3D models other students had designed. We told each other what we liked about them and what we would improve. We talked about how to think like designers and how we could improve our 3D models by looking at buildings. As historians, we ask how things are connected to each other. Before we went on our history walk, we each chose one leaf, examined it, and then mixed it with other leaves and tried to find ours again. Each leaf is different, but there are similarities between them all. We went for a walk in the neighbourhood around our school. We kept our leaves with us to remind us to look closely at the buildings we would see on our walk, to see what is unique about them and also how they are alike. On our walk, we looked at 19th century buildings. We found out what they were built for, who used them and what they were made of. We visited a mosque and a church. We looked at the mortar and pestle sign on an old chemist shop. We walked behind the row cottages and we went into the hotel and stood on the balcony. We wrote field notes and made sketches. We used a checklist to guide our observations, build our vocabulary and focus our attention. We learned about some of the people who used the buildings in the past and saw how they were used now. All of the buildings are still used today. I enjoyed going into the buildings. My favourite place we went into was the mosque. I normally walk past there when I walk home and I normally just look at it and I, before the walk I didn't know what it was for. I used to look out the window and wonder what those white towers were. I had no idea why, why they were there. I'd see them from a far, far away distance and I'd just think they're just white poles. We always used to look at the mosque, but we didn't know it used to be called that. We learned about new things, because I've never learned about this, even though I walk past the chemist shop every day. It helped me learn a lot about the buildings around our local community. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like maybe three or four main um, countries but then it was like there was all these different nations that uh, have shops in Australia or have businesses yeah I was really surprised if I hadn't gone on that walk I would have never known those things to remind us of the places we visited on our walk we played a game We then chose a photo of a building and using our field trip notes and sketches, we annotated it. The visual glossary helped us to remember the names of features like sandstone, stained glass and coins. Now we had to choose a building that would be the inspiration for our 3D models. Our brief was to select five features from our building that we would include in our design. I found that when we did the paper, 
and we had to write down, we had to label everything. That was really fun because even as I was doing that, I learned a lot of new things. And we did all the little sketches. Um, it sort of made me realise how much detail is in each building. And when I did my final design, I could add some of those details. It was easier to spot out what, what details there were. It helped me get the right shape, but before I didn't know how I was actually going to make it look a bit like the church. And also writing stuff on the checklist let me know more things. And yeah, I, haven't, I never knew what coins and, well, and minarets were. <laughs> So um, it was really interesting. It was a very interesting education to learn other things that I've never learned before. We sketched our model and then after our design was signed off by the lead architects, we started designing using the Maker's Empire software. Because designers are problem solvers, thinkers and communicators, we gave each other feedback about our designs. We talked about what we liked about them and how we thought they could be improved. We continued to work on and improve our designs and soon they were ready for printing. We watched some of our 3D models being printed. Printing can take a long time so most of the models were printed at Maker's Empire. We were excited when our models were delivered. We took our finished models and presented them to the building that inspired them. And there we had our portraits taken. Later on, we got a copy of the photo as a memento. All of the students produced a 3D printed model as the final outcome of this project. But the project was not just about 3D printing. Students were engaged and excited to learn about the past through stories and clues in the world around them. They used observations, creative thinking and design skills to make connections and they took inspiration from the past to communicate and represent their ideas using current technologies. This project was designed to foster an interpretive mindset. Key to this was asking the students for responses inviting them to historic places and saying, listen to some stories about this place. Come inside, walk up the stairs, look through the stained glass windows, feel the rough walls and peek around behind them. Be interested, draw, explore. Look at photographs, but don't just look. Make annotations, make sketches, and ultimately, use design and new technologies to respond to history. I think I learned a lot more on the history of those buildings and the buildings that's around us. And I also had a lot of fun doing it. It was very interesting and it was a great experience. And I didn't know much about any of the buildings. I used to notice those places, but never like properly. Like I used to just think of as all the other shops, like the same thing. But then now that we've actually done this, I noticed that they have a very old history and much different. Yeah, like uh, I didn't look at it as so normal and common as I used to. And, and also other buildings that I actually haven't explored. I still look at them, see what there is. Other buildings that we didn't even go into, I think, oh, that's a nice shaped building. It would take a lot of effort to make that. And I wonder what, the purpose of that building is actually used for. So I take notice of other buildings as well. You should try doing this activity with lots of other schools because I think they'll enjoy it a lot. Upskilling people on how to interpret what they see may foster an appreciation of heritage and a desire to protect and value it. Only time will tell.